Opposite of what regret says is what you should do. Regret says accept a backbench. Do not dare to go to the pinnacle of where the Lord has ordained you to go. And grace is saying, come up higher. Come up here. There's still space for you up here. Grace is saying, come, let me hold your hand and take you to where God has ordained you to be. Come on, stop living in regret and go to where God has ordained you to be. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the part of the world where we are today. I'm so happy that you can join me once again on this episode of Prayer, Word and Worship. And today we'll be talking about the cure for regret. The cure for regret. Yes, many of us have gone through the cycle of I wish I didn't. You've gone through the um, period of regret. And also repentance, asking God for forgiveness. But sometimes... Despite the fact that we've asked God for forgiveness again and again, again and again, many of us have repented of one sin we've committed years back, like 20 times, some even as much as uncountable times. Still, we can't seem to get away from this regret that keeps clouding us, especially when we are around people that keeps going back or keeps taunting us of what we've done before or keep reminding us of what we've done before. And then we look at ourselves and say, truly, I don't think I am worthy to have come out of this regret. Or I don't think I'm worthy to have said, oh, I've been healed of this regret. But I have a good news for you today. God wants us to live above regret. God wants to use that regret positively for his own glory. And I pray the Lord we open our eyes today and give us the grace to be able to live above it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the last episode, we talked about, I wish I didn't. What regret can do to us. And we spoke about the six Ds that regret can do to us. I'm just going to go through it for emphasis sake so that for some of us that have not listened, we can just know it and then go back and listen for more. We said um, regret causes demotion, takes you from the pedestal where God has placed you and puts you down, makes you feel you're not worthy to be up there. You see, and we also said regret can cause depression. Regret causes depression. Regret causes demoralization. Regret can cause deprivation. Regret can make us to distance ourselves from God. And the final one is dejection. Regret can cause dejection. So with all these dangers that are associated with regret, I'm sure you agree with me that a state of regret is not a place for a child of God. It's not a place for anyone, not just a child of God, for anyone that has been created in the image of God. And that's why today we want to talk about the cure for regret, the cure for regret. We just don't want to go through a phase where we say, okay, I don't want to stay in the state of regret. And then temporarily you leave the state and before you know it, you're back there. No, we want to have a permanent cure for regret. And this can only be possible in Jesus Christ. So as many that are watching me today that you don't know Jesus yet, or you knew him before and then you divorced him, or you knew him before and then you sent him back in, I want to tell you that the only person that can help you to overcome regret is Jesus Christ. Many times the word we say, oh, to overcome regret, do some good deeds, do some good deeds, do some charitable deeds, do this and do that, you know. And many of us have tried to do it again and again. Some people have even gone to the point of having some bats in the stream. As dirty as the stream may be, they don't care. They just want to be free of the guilt and the regret they have. But there is no soap that can wash us clean from any regret. The only person that can rescue us from regret is who? Is Jesus Christ. And I want to assure you that if you come to him, the Bible says, he will no wise cast you out when you come to him. So let us come to him today because he's the only one that can give us the cure for regret. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we said regret is a state of, of, of grief for past deeds or for past experiences and makes us many times unable to move forward because we keep believing, oh, I have messed up. 
oh, I have disappointed myself. I disappointed God. I disappointed my friends and families. And, you know, we keep thinking about this, especially when our friends and families also keep talking about it again and again and again. But the good news about it is that we have a God that when he forgives, he can also forget it. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So regret or repentance can follow a bad decision that we've taken, you see? Sometimes we've flaunted God's um, rules, just like Jonah did before. Sometimes we are so ashamed of him among our friends, you know, we want to be like a woke people. We don't want to be seen as a born again, you know. We just want to do what others are doing. We want to be like others. We find out that we, be, we, we end up becoming who we don't want to become. And it's more painful, especially when we've had repeated warnings, repeated warnings, you know, by the Lord by our parents, by our guidance, by, by different people, loved ones around us, and still we end up in this. But despite that, God still has a care for you. God still has a care for me. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. As long as, I, as you're living, you can still access the cure for regret. Unfortunately, Judas Iscariot regretted. He killed himself and he couldn't access the forgiveness of God. Suicide is not the cure for regret. Self-harm is not the cure for regret. Depriving ourselves of good things is not the cure for regret. The cure for regret can only be gotten in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe the Lord is going to grant it unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Temptation is inevitable. Many of us regret because we find ourselves doing what we thought we would never do. We were tempted and then we fell. Temptation is a part of our journey in life. It will always come. But what we do to temptation, either we fall or we overcome, is what decides, will determine what will happen afterwards. So even if you fall into temptation, come back to God. Don't let the devil keep dragging you, keep dragging you. Oh, you're falling, you're falling. Now you belong to me. No. God has redeemed us from the cause of law from the law of sin so come back to him and he can reinstate us to where he has destined us to be don't listen to devil's account of god the devil's account of god is so perverse it's not the correct thing so don't listen to the devil saying oh god god does not love you god has god has, deject, has rejected you no the bible says while we were yet sinners christ loved us and he died for the old world that were even in sin so i wonder if this god died for us when we were sinners when he sent his only begotten son to die for you and i when we were sinners what can then separate us from his love nothing except if we don't come to him i pray the lord will help us in jesus name look at luke 15 verse 22 to 24 in that passage, we see the prodigal son even telling himself, I'm going to go to my father. Father, make me one of your hired servants. Luke 15 verse 22 to 24 says, But the father said to his servants, he had a very bad um, mindset about his father. He was expecting the father to say, you, you came back to my house. I'm going to deal with you. So he said, no, don't, father, I'm not coming as your son. I'm just coming as a servant. But the father blew him out of his mind with what he did. He says in verse 20, the Bible even says, as he was far away from distance, the father ran to meet him. Look at the love of God for us. Look at the love of, of God for us. So you can't even comprehend it. The Bible says in verse 22, but the father said to his servant, Bring the best robe and put it on him. Hey, come on. See this boy that after he finished spending the money, he started living in poverty. He started living a dejected life. He started living a depriving life. He started living a depressing life. He was even trying to eat the food of the pigs. Ew. And then he came back home expecting the worst. The Bible says, the father said, put the best, the what? The best robe on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. 
His father restored him despite the speech he came with. Oh, the speech I came in is just that. Um, my father, I don't want to be called your son. He, he, you know, he didn't even wait for his father to say, I disown you. He disowned himself. Father, I have disowned myself like many of us do to God. God, I have disowned myself. I am not worthy to be called your child any longer. And God is saying, come to me. I still have a place for you. Amen. And bring the fattened calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. How many of us are lost? And instead of rerouting and finding our steps back to Christ, we keep going in the wrong way because we fear the wrath of the Father. The Father is loving. Yes, he, he does not love sin. He hates sin, but he still loves you. Come back to him. Leave regrets behind. Leave all those things behind. Come back to him. Yes, you failed him in ministry. Oh, yes, you disappointed him. You disappointed the trust of people in you. Still, he wants you back. Come back to him. Humble yourself. Ask, Father, I am sorry. You'll be surprised at the show of love you're going to receive. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Break the cycle of sin. So many of us are in the cycle of sin. The devil tells you, oh, you are far gone. You've committed so many abortions. Oh, you've killed people. Oh, you've defrauded people of their hard-earned money. Oh, you've done so many bad things. Why don't you just keep living in this? Because God cannot rescue you. But it is a lie. Because God wants to rescue you from the cycle of sin. It's just like you going out, you're dirty. You went out, you're smelling, you're dirty, and then you don't want to go into the bathroom because you don't want to dirty the bathroom. How does that sound? Oh, I don't want to go into the bathroom. This bathroom is so nice, so beautiful. No, come to God. Is a specialist in restoring lives that are damaged. Is a specialist in restoring people that have gone into the world. Is a specialist in bringing back people, in making things to turn around. The Bible says it makes all things the bad, the ugly, the dejected, the most wretched sinners. It makes all things to work together for good. That's the kind of God we serve. So don't. Don't look at God and, and make him too small. Don't look at God and say, oh, your blood is not enough to wash me clean. His blood is more than enough to wash us clean. Leave regrets and come back to him. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So don't let the devil give you a perverse character of God. Don't hear from the devil about your own father. Enough of self-pity. Enough of self-condemnation. Come on. Stop berating yourself. You've berated yourself enough. Enough of that. Retrace your step and ask God for forgiveness. And don't go back to your mystic. The devil is going to come back again and again to get you to denounce God. But you have to make up your mind and say, no. Enough is enough. Now I am for God. And the Lord will help us to stay with him in Jesus' name. Know that you, you deserve forgiveness. Most of us, the devil has given us a wrong perception, has brainwashed us to make us believe, no, you don't deserve forgiveness. Tell yourself, I deserve forgiveness. I deserve God's love. I deserve God's grace. And that you shall receive if you come to him in Jesus' name. And many of us are more gracious to others. When people make mistakes, we forgive them. When people do some things, we, oh, we overlook it. But when we disappoint God or when we disappoint ourselves, we've disappointed our family, we refuse to forgive ourselves. We are so wicked to ourselves. Why? Even when we've made mistakes, we refuse to forgive ourselves. We need to be gracious to ourselves. God has forgiven you, but we have refused to forgive ourselves. We keep digging up the mistakes God has forgi forgiven and forgotten. We keep digging it up. God, you don't remember this mistake. You don't remember this sin. You don't remember this teenage pregnancy. You don't remember this time I stole this money. You don't remember this time I, I, I did not obey you. You don't remember this. And God is saying, I don't remember. I have sent it into the bottomless ocean. I don't remember. 
learn to forgive yourself. And let's take a break from those that constantly remind us. Sometimes it's also difficult to walk away or to grow out of regret because we keep listening to people that keep pulling us down. Keep pulling us down. You take one step, they pull you back two times. No, leave those toxic relationships. Leave those people that do not support you. Leave those people that only what they see is the evil in you, is the bad side of you, is your weakness. Leave those people that every day they... Keep reminding you, you know, you can't make the right decision. You know, you are not strong to do this. You know, you are not a good person. And they keep telling you that till you believe it, even in your dreams. Leave those corner and come to the corner of God that says you are the best. That says I can turn you around to be who I have destined you to be. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's trust God because he can make all things to work together for our good. Never allow hopelessness. Don't allow it. And remember, that's one of the things that, that comes with regret. Hopelessness and depression. It can come, it can become overwhelming for us. In case it becomes overwhelming. Or even by the time you feel you can't outgrow it. Please let us seek for help. Let us seek for help. Because many of us are carrying this guilt of sin. It's like an heavy load on our head. And we keep feeling heaviness on our neck. We keep feeling heaviness on our body. Why? Because we are carrying load of sin. Leave this load of sin at Calvary. Let Christ carry it for you. That is the reason why he died. Leave it there and don't take it back. When you take it to the cross, don't take it back. Leave it there for him. Don't allow it. And let us... Just allow people to heal from their mistakes. Many of us are like the older, older brother of the prodigal son. We keep reminding people of their mistake. We keep reminding people of their sin. We keep believing people cannot outgrow. Oh, leopard skin cannot change. You are like the leopard. You can't change. Even where God is saying, this person is a different being now. We still believe you cannot change. No. When we say that, God is working on someone. Let us support them. Don't be the one that will say, I told you so. I told you so. Come on. Even though you have not fallen into such sin, those that think they stand, be careful so that you don't fall. The fact that you are standing is not by your, by your own power. If you laugh at them, God can take the grace from you. And then you can also fall into the same sin you are laughing at them for. Let us be careful. Let us be careful. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We've all made mistakes. We've all come short of the glory of God. But don't allow your mistake to define you or stop you from being who and what God has destined you to be. I've made some mistakes in my life. You have made some mistakes in your life. But that mistake should not define you. You should not be called by that mistake. Yes, we have done some things that we are not proud of. But that does not mean we should get stuck in that place. Break that cycle. Stop living in regret of what sin, of what your disobedience has robbed you of. Stop it. Stop living at that state. Start living in the restoration that redemption has brought for us. Start living in that. Because that is who the Lord has called us to be. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Many times... We keep seeing regret and we keep looking in the, in the rear view mirror. The rear view mirror is very important as you journey in life, you know, look once in a while, look once in a while as you're driving. But if you perpetually look in the rear view mirror, what happens? You're going to eat the vehicle in front or you're going to have an accident. Stop looking at the regret. Stop looking at the mistakes you've made. You are not the mistake you've made. You are more than that. Amen. And how can we use regret positively? Even if we've, we have some regret, some things we're not so proud of, how can we use it positively? It can be an opportunity to evaluate ourselves. When we've done something wrong and then we regret it, sit down, evaluate yourself. How did you get here? What did you do wrong? How can you do better? So you can make use of regret positively when you evaluate yourself. It can allow us to grow to a better version of ourselves. It can allow us to improve on our weaknesses. 
It can allow us to improve our strength so that we are not the same person and we don't go back to that mistake we've made. Confront regret with restoration in mind. When you know, okay, this is what I've done wrong. I, I'm so, I don't like this. I'm so sad about this. Okay. Confront regret with restoration in mind. We see when, when God regret, regretted creating man, as he said in Genesis chapter 6. Oh, I regret making man. What did he do? The Bible says he decided on what to do, on how to clear the earth of the wicked people. He sent flood. Flood cleared them and he left Noah and his family. God did not just stay in the state of regret perpetually. Oh, I regret making man. No, I regret making man and I'm going to send a flood. And I'm, that is the kind of thing as image of God we are supposed to do. Yes, I don't like this thing that I've done. I have decided to take this step. I have decided to take this step to prevent me from falling into this mistake again. And when God regrets said, uh, making King Saul, king over Israel, what did he do? He chose King David. Even though it took years for King David to go to come up on the throne, he chose him. And even though the prophet Samuel was still um, interceding for him, he told him, I have rejected him. So if we've made a mistake and we regret let us use it constructively and take some steps on the next thing to do. You see, let's build on it. What can I do next? Go back to the planning board. Start constructing again. Okay, I, I, I spent a lot of my years in this relationship. I spent a lot of my years in this business. I've tried to do this and at the end of the day, it ended up in regret. Fine. Sit down on the on the board again. It's time to make another plan if that plan did not work. Dissect that regret. Dissect it. Okay, this regret, this is what I shouldn't have done. This is what I should have done. This is, you know, the pros and the cons. Write them down. Dissect it and learn from it. Don't just keep regretting, regretting, regretting without getting anything positive from it. Dissect your regret and learn from it. Although regret also tells you, oh, play it safe. Your decision making is faulty. You can't do this. You can't do that. No. When you have learned from your regret, take a step and act. If you need to take a decision, take a decision. If you need to do some things, do it. Don't let regret keep you stay in a place. Regret will tell you, no, don't make a decision. Your decision making skills is zero. You're not good. Okay, you can't do this. Oh, you can't go into business. Ask yourself, oh, how did I feel in that business? How did I lose my money? When you've gotten why you failed, then go back to the board and decide on how to overcome that, on how to prevent yourself from falling into the, into the same mistake. Block your ears from discouragement as a result of regret. Block your ears. Even people that are close to you will tell you, oh, you want to do business again. The last business you did, you did this, you missed it, you wasted money, you missed effort. Yes, it's true. Tell them yes and no, it's true. Is what you said is very right. But this is the reason why I failed. Not because I took a decision, not because I did the business, but because I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. And if you need to learn, more about that do it whatever it is you need to do to avoid you feeling again to avoid you falling again do it and the lord will help us in jesus name you know many times we pray we, we all wish we can just press the undo button and all the mistakes we've made in the past we just clear and then we have a clean slate but sorry it's not possible so we have to still deal with what we have hallelujah Amen. And regret can also be used by God to bring you home. Look at the story of the prodigal son. It was regret of what is, he has done that made him come to himself. I need to go back home. Hey, I need to go back home. Regret can be used as a tool by God to pull you back to himself. And when God is trying to pull you back, stop fighting it. Stop fighting God. Stop fighting God. Come back to him. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The devil, it is devil's business. He loves to replay the sin. 
of how you failed God, of how you failed yourself again and again, again and again. But you can decide to break that loop yourself when you come back to God, when you make use of that regret positively for yourself. Amen. Regret says you are not worthy to be an heir of God's kingdom again, but grace says you are. Tell yourself, I am worthy. I am worthy. Opposite of what regret says is what you should do. Amen. Regret says, accept a back bench. Do not dare to go to the pinnacle of where the Lord has ordained to you to go. And grace is saying, come up higher. Come up here. There's still space for you up here. Grace is saying, come, let me hold your hand and take you to where God has ordained you to be. Come on, stop living in regret and go to where God has ordained you to be. We saw the story of the prodigal son. It says, give him the best robe. God has the best robe for you. Regret is telling you, wear the robe of dejection, wear the robe of shame, wear the robe of self-pity, wear the robe of anger, wear the robe of self-hatred. But grace is saying, come, come and take the robe of righteousness, come and take the robe of forgiveness, come and take the robe of restoration. Which one do you want to listen to? The voice of regret or the voice of grace? Choose the one you want and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Your royal robe is ready. Your seat is waiting. What are you waiting for? Come, my friend. Let's go to the God that can restore us from regret to grace. Hallelujah. Regret will tell you all your what is at ache. All your what is a shattered heart. All your what is is a, is a, is a, is an hopeless life. And grace is saying you are worthy of love. You are worthy of forgiveness. You are worthy of restoration. You are worthy of self-love. You are worthy of all good things. Who do you want to listen to? Grace or regret? I believe it is grace you are. You need today. You need the grace of the Lord. So come, come, come. Let's go to him, the God of all grace. And we help us in Jesus' name. Jesus sees more in you than the regret. Jesus sees more in you than the mystic. You might not see it in you. You might not see it in yourself, but he sees more in you than what you've seen. Come back to him. The woman at the well, she didn't see herself as more than the woman that has had like five husbands and has no future and has no, nothing to show for it. But God gave her a ministry. God restored her. God gave her a voice where people have silenced her. God also wants to give you a voice where you feel you felt you've been silenced, where you felt you don't have a voice, where you felt you should just put your head down. God says, raise your head up. You have a voice. I have given you the voice and I want you to use it for my glory. Amen. So God still sees the Peter that will raise up the dead, even when Peter was seeing himself as a fisherman. I'm not worthy of your love any longer, God. Just go and choose another disciple. Leave me. I have... Eh, can you imagine? I denied you three times when you are going through your worst moment in life. And God still says, don't worry. I'm going to use you. See what the devil tried to do. To rob him of the great destiny God had for him. God empowered him to the point that he preached 3,000 souls were saved. He preached 5,000 souls were saved. The Bible says he got to a point, his shadow was healing Jesus. And the devil was telling Peter then, you are not worthy of restoration. You are not worthy to be called a disciple. What has the devil told you? It is a lie from the pit of the hell. God is calling you back. Come back to him. Come back to him. Is ready to cure you of every regret. Is ready to cure you of every mistakes you've made. Come back to him. Amen. The only way to overcome regret, the only way to overcome regret is going back to the hands of the Father. Let us go back to the hands of the Father. Overcoming regret is a progressive development, is a progressive growth. Step by step. Some days, it can be 10 in 10, it can be 8, 9, 7. Some days it can be 0, it can be 1, it can be 2. Don't be discouraged. Keep going to him. Keep going to him. He wants to restore you back. You're still going to get back to that place. Peter didn't get back to that place in one day. Jesus had to ask him three times, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He says, Lord, you know I love you. He had to ask him again, do you love me? 
And the third time he says, oh God, you know all things. You know I love you. Because God saw that he, he was living in regret and that was depriving him from coming back to the arms of the Father. God is waiting for you. Come back to him today. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will grant us the grace to come back to him in Jesus' name. Acknowledge that you are living in regret. Many of us don't want to acknowledge it. Many of us don't want to face that fact. Come on, face the fact. Evaluate yourself. Am I living in regret? Am I making decisions in regret? Am I living my life in regret? Am I going forward in my life in regret? Am I dealing with people around me because of regret? Evaluate yourself. And if you see that you are living your life in regret or you have been captured in regret, you have been stagnant in the state of regret, take the step to break it. Secondly, ask God for help to overcome it. Overcoming regret requires the help of God. Ask God for help to overcome the spirit of regret. Ask him for help. Thirdly, go back to God just like the prodigal son. He is waiting for you. Go back to God. After you have evaluated your life, you have acknowledged that you are living in regret. You've asked God for help to overcome regret. Go back to God. If you've missed your way, go back to him. Ask for forgiveness. God, I'm sorry. I want to come back to you. Help me. Teach me how to come back to you. Help me to overcome every spirit of regret in any way. And I trust the Lord is going to come true for us in Jesus' name. He will not cast you out. He will forgive. He will restore. And those are the things that helps us to overcome regret. Amen. Accept the love and forgiveness of Jesus. Stop telling yourself, I don't deserve the love and forgiveness of Jesus. You deserve it and more. When he gives you love, when he gives you forgiveness, accept it. Don't say, oh God, I've done evil things. Apostle Paul, he was persecuting the church. But when he saw Jesus, he came to him. He did not look at himself like, oh, I've done so many evil things. He allowed the restoration power of Jesus to walk upon him. Give God your broken heart. Give God your dashed hope. Your unrealized dreams. Give it to him. He is a master at mending things. He will mend it and restore you back. Even beyond your own expectations. Beyond my own expectations. And I pray the Lord will help us as we do that in Jesus name. Allow the Lord to nurture you back. Allow him. Don't say, God, okay, I just want to give you a part. I want to owe the rest. No, give him everything. Everything, your broken heart. Everything, your disappointment. Give it to him. He's able to do great and powerful things with it. Hallelujah. Another point that is very, very difficult for us is to forgive ourselves. For you to overcome regret, forgive yourself. Tell yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I forgive myself for making this kind of mistake. I forgive myself for bringing myself into this situation. I forgive myself. Forgive yourself because if you don't forgive yourself, you cannot heal. You cannot overcome regret. So forgive yourself. Yes, I did this. I brought this upon myself. I forgive myself and I am worthy of love. I am worthy of mercy. I am worthy of forgiveness. Stop allowing the devil to feel because you make a wrong decision. You should keep living and regret because of it. No, God has better plans for us. Amen. God has forgiven and forgotten those things. Don't keep digging them up. And still holding them to your heart. God, I'm not worthy of forgiveness. Forgive yourself. And let it go. Hallelujah. The next point is stand up and continue your walk with the Lord. Many of us, because of the decisions we've made that is wrong in time past, we have decided not to go back to God. We have decided not to walk again for Him. We have decided not to even follow whatever He's saying. We have decided not to go back to the Lord. We have decided not to go on in the ministry because we felt, oh, I've disappointed God. God knows and he still has a place for you. He still has a ministry for you. The devil doesn't want you to continue just like he told Peter, you can't continue. 
But God still wants to heal through you. God wants to bring the dead back to life through you. Why are you depriving people that he has sent you to of the blessing because of regret? Let your experience fuel you to help others and have empathy for everyone. Many of us, when we go through some situations in life, it helps us understand when we see others going through the same situation. Don't be like the older brother of the prodigal son that keeps thinking, I've always been righteous. I didn't do any bad thing. I've always worked for you. And so the fact that you've been able to stand in the Lord continuously is because of his grace. If we see others that are falling, don't push them out. Don't pull them down. Let us be a support to them. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's refuse to believe the lies of the devil. He said you are worthless. He said you cannot be used by God. He said you are a failure. He said God cannot use you. He said you are this. He's going to say every horrible thing he can say to discourage you. Don't believe it. The only thing that can rescue you is what? Is truth. Know the truth of God's word. And the truth is what? He loves us while we were yet sinners. Christ has died for my sins. Come back to him. Is waiting for you. I have a good news for you. God loves you and does not hate you at all. He hates sin, but he loves you. Because even while you were yet sinner, the Bible says he died for you, he died for me. Shake off the dust of regret. Step into who God has called you to. God loves you always. Do not allow the devil to rob you of God's love. Don't allow him. That's the specialty of the devil, to rob us of the love of God. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So we've learned about the re cure for regret. We said we must acknowledge, evaluate ourselves. Are we living in regret? If you are living in regret, ask God to help you to overcome the spirit of regret and then accept the love and forgiveness of God. Forgive yourself. Stand up. And continue your work with God. Don't believe the lies of the devil. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Don't forget, accept forgiveness from God. Let him restore you. Let him remove you. And let him recommission you for the work he has for you. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord will grant us the grace to always overcome regret. Even as we go on in life, we may have taken some decisions. We don't know it's going to end up badly. Even as it comes out and it ends up badly, we can still overcome it. We can still overcome it because we know we have a God that is always there for us. He's not caught by surprise by any decision we make, by even when we fall. But what breaks his heart is when we continuously stay there and we don't want to move forward. Come on, friends, let us take a step and leave the place of regret where the devil has made us to be stuck. Thank you for joining me in today's study once again. I believe you've been blessed. Please don't forget to like, to share, to comment, and to subscribe. And I will see you next time. God bless you. Bye.